That would be be good. So we're going to sing page 514 this morning. When we all get to heaven, Bonnie, you're going to help me out, aren't you? I feel better when I have, have company up here. But uh, let's sing when we all get to I, I like that song. This is a good song. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he prepared a place for struggling to we don't have no bread, we have no bread. Uh, and I tell you something else I noticed on those couple of verses I missed some words that I would have never missed before and that's because I guess we we just don't sing the old hymns enough you know uh, what shame yeah it is I miss Don Guthrie saying amen yeah, that's right, yeah. Uh, Gerald Wolf and Great Vision put on a program it's called him sing and if you're ever close enough to go to one of them you ought to go because all they do is sing hymns and and they get the congregation singing they'll have certain different southern gospel groups lead certain things but but it is a, a great time we went to one of them uh, yeah you can if you go to youtube and and just put in him sing you'll see something also uh robin uh, the the channel that you just subscribe to singing news which is the southern gospel yeah, yeah. They, they, now they have a uh, app that is like 99 dollars a year and you can go on there and see all kinds of concerts um i don't know what to call concerts but all the groups you know like the church you could they've got tv shows like the old old and it, it's it's really well well worth it i mean we think it that's so it's called singing news yeah. and and you can and you can stream it to your tv if you've got the right stuff a chromecast or a, a, TV, that's a tv that's the new tvs have smart stuff they will cast themselves you know or you can look yeah if you got a, you got an ipad or a, a tablet or a, a smartphone you can pull that stuff up <laughs> well we, do, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of folks that don't uh we just need to to remember our prayer request of course we need to continue to remember harlan and uh, they're not here today and gene i'm glad you're 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 doing better today are you good that is wonderful uh need to continue to pray for gene and and what she's got going on and Everything and imaging, do you have one too? Yes, uh, Harmon texted me at least three times this morning. Uh, her legs and feet are bothering her and okay. feels back. Okay. Right. So we're fine. I remember those. And, yes, Cheryl. Uh, I also checked on uh, Brad and Loretta Cummings. Yes. Cummings. Mm -hmm. This week. And uh, if they appreciated me uh, looking them up and checking on them. But uh, they found another church. They've been going to Landmark. Oh, okay. Oh, really? Right. 
Yes, yeah, sure. We have a friend who lives in Nebraska, and she has been in the hospital 13 days already with COVID, and they thought she was doing better yesterday, and then she had a really bad experience all night long, and she's doing better this morning. Her name is Sandy Shapen, and her husband's name is Jim, and they just ask him prayers for that. Jim and Sandy, okay. All right. Any others? Yes. Brother Godfrey Feynman. Yeah, the, Brother Godfrey Beautiful passed Tuesday. away. Uh, oh, he was 102. Oh, really? oh, that's right. A few, yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. It, uh, December, wasn't it? Yeah. He was going to yeah. turn 102. Yeah. Tuesday, isn't it? Yes, Tuesday. I, I don't remember what time. Nine to ten. Nine to ten is the nine visit. Nine and ten. Nine and ten. Nine so the visitation is nine and the service is at ten. So remember, remember that one. Okay. Any course, others? Course Williams needs. Right? Yes. Do, do, do. Yeah, our our kids, uh, Jeremy and, and Jessica, and the two girls, granddaughters, are flying back. Should be on the plane right now from Phoenix. They spent the week out there this this week with mission, doing mission work. So um, that was uh, little Joe. She's six, and uh, she didn't want to fly because you have. They said they told her they had to take the, the COVID, COVID test. test. She, was down she wasn't going to take nothing. They weren't going to let nobody stick nothing up her nose. <laughs> but she, she didn't have to take it. So she's, she's fine. Yeah, she was ready to, to go. And, and the oldest granddaughter had already, they had tried to go to Guatemala a few weeks ago and American Airlines messed them all up and everything. So it was very, very difficult. You know, so. Tim, of course, most everybody in here knows who John and Jeanette Bush. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, what that song? Yeah, they, you know, they've been having some great in Delaware. Tent revival. Tent revival. People in Delaware. Saved and they had a person, you know, what they typically do in those is they, anybody that comes forward, they'll take them over to a separate tent and, and counsel them yeah. and witness to them and everything. There was a lady the story goes that she says I've got to get saved now and, and so Chris McDaniels I don't know if any of y'all remember him he came to our church and, and sang and played when we were worshiping in the gym when the sanctuary has been renovated but he used to be with the Confederate Railroad wasn't it? The country group he got saved and man he was he came down off the platform and went and and prayed with this lady to re receive salvation. She didn't want to go to the room. She, she, yeah, she, she, she also had cerebral palsy. Yeah, that's right, she did. Yeah. So she just was adamant. She, was she needed to, she needed the Lord and so they 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 got around her and they she received Christ. How many was saved that I think it was it that that was the last time was there 150 I, I, I don't remember. The whole but, week. Yeah. The whole week. I've been reading other things too that say that there is a spiritual awakening. Awakening, that's right, and that's what we need that to pray we're for. We're going to really, as a result of everything, we're getting ready to have a spiritual awakening. I pray that's really God's Absolutely, truth. and we ought to prepare our hearts. Yes, we ought to prepare our hearts. Just heart. like Greg Rock in Tennessee. I mean, yeah, he won't even go in a church building. He, this has been uh, Hermitage, Tennessee, and he, he's found bigger tents and people are coming from everywhere. Yeah. I mean, it's like you look at that, and he said, we'll never go back in the church building because we can't hold the people. Right. He said, if I have to get up, he just keeps getting bigger tents. I mean, it is amazing to see what, and he has people from CNN and these, the heathens come and, they, they're you know, curious. They're curious. They want to see, they're, they're curious. They want to shut down. He's had threats on his life, on his family's life. I mean, and he's had all kinds of bad stuff, but he's he's bound and determined to proclaim the gospel. Well, we're told don't be curious about evil, but we can be curious about this. And that's right. That's right. Okay. Any other prayer requests? Remember Brother Tommy. Brother Tommy's preaching today. Uh, Brother okay. Rick is on vacation. Uh, Michael and Co. came in from Colorado, and they're spending time this weekend. That's my understanding. So. And his friend passed away. Yes, and, and Charles Freeman, the, the pastor up in Huntsville. can't remember the name of that church. Hillwood, I think it was, or Hill something. But he passed away and, and uh, gone through a lot, and they're they're good. We're, we're good friends. So uh, I'm gonna ask my wife if she will, to lead us in prayer this morning.
Right. Um, you noticed I put my sound my sound system in here. So if if you're having a hard time hearing or seeing something, just move wherever you need to to move. It's not like we got assigned seats in here. Okay. I did when I was in school. I had an assigned seat right in front of the teacher's desk so she could uh -oh. watch me. And uh, so, but we don't have that in here. So I, I hope that that you can hear fine. If not, we'll try to turn it up a little bit. Today's lesson is entitled, The King at the Gate. We're in Ecclesiastes 9. And as we know, Solomon is getting ogre. Now, none of us get ogre. We don't get ogre. We get better. Uh, let me put it that way. But he comes more obsessed with the fact and the reality that, that one day he's going to die. And if, if you hadn't thought that, as you've gotten older, then that's great. But we sort of have a tendency to think as we get older. You know, my dad passed at 86. Robin's daddy just passed at 82. I'm 65. That means I'm probably not going to last too long. But then we have people like my stepmother who will be 95 in July. And brother, brother Dole here is just a young fellow. 92. 92, you know. So, but we're getting closer to that date. And we need to recognize that. And Solomon was getting older and he, he had to uh, come to the realization that it was closer than it was any time before. Um, it's not a pleasant subject to talk about death. But there is a, a, a group of people that should fear the subject more than others. Those that do not know Christ. And then there's another group. Those that know him but are not living their fullest for Christ. Amen. Now, there's a scripture in 1 Corinthians 3. starts about verse 12. And it talks about the rewards that you and I will get. And it talks about the precious metals, the silver and the gold and the precious stones and the wood and the hay and the stubble. And if you read those several verses in there, it talks about the, those all represent the things that you and I do for the Lord. But it says when the fire comes, the wood and the stubble and the hay is burnt up. It's consumed to be no more. Only those things that can withstand the fire. What happens to silver and gold if you put fire to it? Yeah. It only becomes purer, doesn't it? Yeah. All right. The special, uh, precious stones can withstand the heat and everything. So those are the things that are going to be left. And those will be the rewards that you and I get. And then if you go over there in Revelations where it talks about when we place our crowns, there's a, a verse over there that talks about placing the crowns in the feet of Jesus. Mm -hmm. we got five of them. And those crowns are part of our rewards that we've gathered. We're going to place them back in, in Jesus. I tell you what, I can't, I can't wait yeah. for that to happen. But those people that are living and not living the abundant life, but we're going to talk a little bit of, of, about all these people, but mainly the ones are those that don't know Christ. Tim. D yes, sir. <clears throat> those are warned in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 8. Yes. They, if, if you fall away, you're in danger of right. falling away. Um, you know, death is the ultimate defeat for those that don't know Christ. It's, it's, there's no other chance when someone dies and they don't know the Lord for that individual. You know, 
you can you can argue all you want or, or talk about those that are left in the tribulation. Why is the tribulation the way it is? Why you know some folks say there won't be anybody saved during the tribulation. I've gotten into discussions about that. I think there is. There Why is. else is there a reason for tribulation? It is another one of those opportunities that God gives people. So you know you you can get hung up on a lot of things, but we just need to understand that we need to live as close to the Lord Amen. as we possibly can. Um, we're going to give an account. The judgment seat of Christ is where we will give an account. But as, as Solomon is, is writing these, these uh, chapters, these, this book in Ecclesiastes, um, you know, how many wasted years? If y'all have ever heard the song, I know Bonnie has, Wasted Years. My mom used to sing that and everything, talking about the years that we've wasted. You will realize that at the judgment seat. That's right. We will realize that. Um, chapter 9 primarily deals with this subject of death. And as many of these chapters, Solomon is speaking from the perspective of under the sun. In other words, the earthly perspective. Okay? Um, he uses this particular phrase six times in this chapter if you read the right version and I don't know if we are today or not I'm going to bounce back and forth but um, in, in the first section the must is entitled the must of death Solomon says in verse 1 I thought about this very carefully I saw that God controls what happens we talked about this recently God is in control Amen. We know that. Last week, I think it was, I asked you whether you believed it or not. And we all said, oh yeah, we believe it. We believe it. Um, read, Tim, read that verse you just read. I thought about it, about all this very carefully. I saw that God controls what happens. Hmm. Is it, are you seeing something different in chapter that's, 9? That's verse 1, chapter 9? Yeah, I thought it was. Well, I mean, I didn't know if it's the version. It's, yeah, it's the version. It's, it's the version I'm yeah. reading. Yeah, it's, it's probably a little different. It is. The Bible says God controls your life where you're going to live and when you're going to live. That's right. And when you're going to die. And when you're going to die. He controls it all. I'm just reading King James. I mean, I saw him. King James after you and I, I thought well, all right this is what and I'm using this is the new American standard it says for I have taken all this to my heart and explained it is righteous men wise men and their deeds are in the hand of God okay man does not know whether it will be love or hatred anything awaits him and this other one is is probably the easy to read version of it um David certainly understood that God was in control. Over in Psalms 31, David says, My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. David not only knew who was in control, but he also knew where to go for his provision. Do you know where to go for your provision? It's to the feet of Jesus, you know, and, and depend upon the Holy Spirit. If you look at the King, New King James Version, it, it, in verses 2 and 3, it reads like this. All things come alike to all. One event happens to the righteous and the wicked, to the good, the clean, and the unclean, to him who sacrifices and him who does not sacrifice, as is the good, so to the sinner. So is the sinner, excuse me. He who takes an oath as he who fears an oath. Verse 3 says, this is an evil and all that is done under the sun. There's that phrase, under the sun. This one thing happens to all, okay? Truly the hearts of son of men are full of evil, madness in their hearts while they live. And after that, they go to the dead. Mm -hmm. Solomon is, is talking about death here, of course, but he's using some contrasts here um, 
and he includes the, the in verse two there, he talks about what happens to the righteous and the wicked. Those are opposites, okay? He talks about the clean and the unclean and those that sacrifice and those that do not sacrifice. He says it doesn't matter. It, this event's going to happen to everyone. And of course, he's talking about death. Um, fact, the saved and the unsaved are going to face death. Then in the middle of third, uh, verse 3, it says, Truly the hearts of the, of the sons of men are full of evil. Madness is in their hearts while they live. What is in the heart of men? It, it, first thing, it, there's evil. We know that, that man is born with a carnal nature. And that's, that's the evil it's talking about here. Even the wicked try to avoid death. Have you ever known anybody that just... Say, oh, I want to die right now. Only when they're in despair or, or, or you know, want something. Well, they think they do. Yeah, they think they do. That's right. Um, <coughs> that's even some of them try to drown themselves in alcohol and drugs and, and uh, you know, try to, and they, then others try to avoid the thoughts of death by, by plunging themselves into worldly pleasures. Jeremiah says in 17, 9, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? How can we understand a, a person's erratic behavior other than there is a spiritual insanity in the unsaved un individual's hearts? Do you know anybody that's, that thinks they're going to live forever, believes they're really going to live forever? <laughs> Now, when we're young, we think we, we you know, yeah. hey, you know, kids think they, they, they're going to. I thought I did. When I got 16 and got in my car, I thought, man, ain't nothing could hurt me. And you would out wrecked your car. I did. I was, <laughs> going, I was going home from her house on he a Sunday little, night. He was a little older than that. Yeah, I was older than that, 16 at that time. <laughs> but I, I, uh, I fell also, asleep. It says foolishness lies in the heart. That's I'm right. It does. Child. Um, and I, I, when we say that, when we talk about it, I ask the question, does anybody believe, really believe that they will live forever? And I'm not talking about us believers that understand we're going to have eternal life. In fact, even the unsaved have eternal life. It just depends on where you spend it. Uh, you're going to spend it either in heaven or hell. And, uh, you know, this, the unsaved seem to, to want to self-destruct. And uh, why would anyone in their right mind want to live like you see some folks live? I, I don't understand it. Um, the prodigal son is a, a great example of one uh, that was not in his right mind at the time he did what he did. He, he told his father, I want my inheritance now. And, and he went off and then he came to himself. We know that he spent time in the, in fact, he spent time in the hog pen with the pigs. Now I used to slop some pigs uh, a little bit. It wasn't my pigs, thank goodness, but it was folks we lived next to and we would, I used to love to watch if it. Out, I, if you lived out in the country, that's what you did. That's right. You took, took everything that came off the table and, and you went out and slopped the pigs, threw it out there. And boy, they enjoyed it. Uh, but the prodigal son finally came to his senses, senses and, and returned home. But in verse 4, Solomon begins to protest the absolute of death. He says... But for him who is joined to all the living, there is hope. Then Solomon illustrates what he means in a very graphic manner. He says, for a living dog is better than a dead lion. How many of y'all have a sweet little dog? I know a couple of them here do. I, I know this and I got to be careful here. Okay. But in, in if you read your lesson, you know Dr. Vines talks about what is meant here by this living dog and he's talking about typically the dogs back then were street dogs that were filthy flea bitten and, and there were mongrels and they scavenged for food 
in the garbage piles. So what does Solomon mean when he says this? He says it's better to be an old flea-bitten dog and be alive than be a dead person or a dead lion is the term he uses here. And what does he mean? He's talking about spiritual death here. Okay? So it's, 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 it's better. Remember what I said, that when somebody dies that are unsaved, there is no hope for that individual. It's fine. Um, Solomon's perspective, of course, is here is a little bit under the sun, but he's, he's you know, giving us a little insight. He makes his uh, uh, meaning abundantly clear in verse 5. He says, For the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing. In other words, those that are dead to uh, the grace of God. And they have no more reward for man. That, yeah, they, they don't. They, they've already gained their yeah, reward. They they? They they, the rest of it says they have no more reward for the memory of them is forgotten. Uh, you know, it, it, you got to remember that Solomon is in the Old Testament times. So we know that, that the patriarchs of old believed for a faith promise, didn't they? Because redemption hadn't occurred. It didn't occur until the New Testament. And, and so th there's a little, you got to understand where they're coming from. And, you know, it, it, if it wasn't for their hope of what was to come. Through the promise. Through the, yes, through that promise. Uh, the New Testament, of course, brings that life to light for us. Solomon is wise. We've talked about this many times. He has, but it, he has limited understanding. But here we know that the dead know something about afterlife too. Remember the story of Lazarus and the rich man? What does, it, what does the scripture say? The rich man was conscious in hell. And what does he do? He, he, he asked Abraham to have uh, Lazarus goes to his brothers, remember? In fact, he said, first just let him put a drop of water on my tongue because I'm in torment. But then he said, go to my brothers. He had, what, five brothers, I think? Something like that. And, and, and of course, he's told that if they didn't believe when you were alive, why would they believe when you're from the dead? You know. So uh, we see that Therefore, it is important for us. This young, rich man had lost his opportunity for eternal life in heaven. So it's important for us to live every day for the Lord. Um, uh, let me say here. Let's jump to verse 7 here. Uh, and it says, Go thy way, eat thy bread with joy, and drink thy wine with a merry heart, for God now accepts thy work. Solomon here again, like I said last week, is not talking about the drink and be merry that was, they thought that, hey, this I'm not going to have tomorrow. It, it, this is, but, but what Solomon is telling us here is that we need to uh, as individuals, we got to come to understand that death is inevitable. But we, because we know that, we need to be prepared for death. And if we do that, if you are prepared for death, then why not enjoy your life here? I tell you what, there's no more enjoyment than coming to church and worshiping with fellow believers. And singing praises to God. It's just amazing. I, it, you know, even when Robin and I, like we're going to this this praise fest uh, in November, and, and we've done it now 21, something like that, 21 years. But on the way up there, we have Enlightened in our car, which is Southern Gospel. And look, I mean, we Robin knows all the songs, and I know a lot of them. And, and we just enjoy 
being able to, to ride along and sing and in, enjoy the, the fellowship with one another and know that we're redeemed in the Lord and that we, we can just worship and just enjoy life. So we need to understand that we as Christians need to enjoy. In fact, if we enjoy life, perhaps we will draw someone to Christ through our living. Christmas time, we always sing, go tell it on the mountain. How much mountain telling or, or anywhere else as far as that matter, how much do we take? I'd like to share something. Uh, you know, the instant connection when you get together Yes. I had an experience this week at, at Walmart. I was riding in a car. Something I wanted was on the top shelf. So this uh, this uh, black lady, uh, about middle age, came by and I asked her, excuse me, could you, could you reach this for me? Oh, she said, I'd be glad to. And so and when she got through, I said, thank you for blessing me. <laughs> and then she started out blessing me. About, and she was even quoting scripture about you know our faith that, that our country is in now and if my people she she yeah. and I said we almost had church right there <laughs> <in that time." laughs> because you know I've never seen her before and probably never will see her again but we had that instant connection of, right. of the believer Absolutely. and it just made me feel so good and so she said a lot of complimentary things but. There's just nothing like being with other believers. And, you know, coming to Sunday school and being with all of you, that's probably a highlight of my week. Absolutely. It just, you, you, you just feel the love. That's right. That's it. This Christmas might be one of the best Christmas we celebrate. I did see on Facebook of all places that say, it's not about what's sitting out there on that ship and cars. That's right. I mean, Jesus, the birth of Jesus is the celebration of Christmas. And I thought, you know, this might be one of the best Christmas that we're going to celebrate. I think, I think that it could very well be. I think we need to be prepared uh, yeah. to make it be. To make it be that way, yeah. But, you know, it's up to us, you know. Um, uh, let me find where I'm at. Oh, the, in verse 7, the believer, uh, Solomon encourages the believer to do four things. Number one, in verse 7, it talks about meal times. We're to enjoy meal times. Now, I don't know about you, but growing up, the highlight of the day was typically at supper time when we sat around the, the supper table and, and uh, uh, until Dad said, boy, to go do your homework, something like that, you know. And, and, uh, but supper time was one of those uh, happy times. And then in, in verse 8, which I've, I've not read yet, it says, Let thy garments be always white, and let thy head lack no ointment. He's talking, Solomon's talking about the special events or times in our life. The ointment is talking about, a, about dressing in our finest clothes and going out somewhere special. Shouldn't we enjoy life as believers? I mean, when Robin and I go to those, there's five sessions in our conference that we go to in, in November. And uh, it, in the mornings it starts at nine, and then it's about 11, 30, 12, something like that. And the evening starts at seven and gets over when it gets over. And and we have mostly music, but then Dan, Dennis Swanberg's there. And you know, <laughs> even in his preaching, he's gonna make you laugh. And uh, so it is just, it, and then fellowshipping with friends. We've got some friends from Roanoke, Virginia that we see every year. Mark and Joanna White. We've got people then, there's some of them that have dropped off. It used to be a couple that came from Northern Michigan every year. And then we got a couple of uh, LG and Sally from, from uh, used to be from Colorado Springs. Now they live down in San Antonio. We see them every year. It's, it's just getting together at those times. There's others that we see there. Uh, but it's, it's, doing something special. Uh, I'll never forget uh, Geraldine, the one that does Geraldine and Ricky, they're in Chilkas, and we've tried to call her lately. She's had a lot of physical problems, but when we were on the cruise, the Alaskan cruise, Dr. Stanley's cruise, she took us out one night to the fanciest restaurant on the ship. 
and wouldn't let us pay or anything. And she just, it was just getting dressed up. You had to dress up to go to it. And you know, I think she's been here in church. She has. She, I, because when we talked and said, yeah. went to Delray to back, she said, I've been there years ago. Yeah, she did. And, and we stayed in touch for a good while. Yeah, she, she is having a lot we of issues. Go, go see her back before daddy got sick and yeah. then I couldn't, couldn't go. And we had made plans to go spend the night with her because she was in the hot, she was did not doing good. And since then I've called her and we talked yeah. once or twice, but I can't get her to answer the phone. And now I'm we really just, concerned. Yeah. Do you know she's, she's passed away? Or well, we no, would have known that. We would have yeah, known Carol her. or somebody, but we're supposed to, she's supposed to be at Praise Fest. Oh, so we okay. keep trying to call her and hopefully we get up with her before we get there. If you do see her, please. I will. No, we will. We will. Verse 9 says, Solomon says, Live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest all the days of the life of thy vanity, which he hath given thee under the sun, all the days of the vanity, for that is thy portion in this life and in the, thy labor which thou takest under the sun. Well, since he had so many wives, that was a good thing for him to say. Yeah, it was. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I... I don't know how, how he could handle that many wives. He didn't. He did, yeah, you're right, no, he, he did. didn't. They, they, and they, they corrupted but him. But he gave you advice. Yeah, he, he did. He did. You know, how different would marriages be today if the husband and wife begin their day remembering the Lord? Amen. I've told you all this before. We have a sign over our bedroom window. And it, it's in, it says, in the morning when I rise, give me Jesus. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's one of my favorite sayings. I, I love it. It's, you know, I thought for a long time it was scripture, but it's not. It's just taking some scriptures and putting some words mm -hmm. together. Um, well, speak Jesus. I speak Jesus. That is, you know. That's right. Absolutely. Uh, Solomon is telling us just don't mope around because death is inevitable. Um, the Christian's life is in God's hand. We need to live it to the fullest. And in, in, in verse 10, he says, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. In other words, with zeal, with zest, do it. Apostle Paul tells us the same thing over in Colossians 3.23. He says, And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Mm -hmm. Why should we live to the fullest? Why should we live life to the fullest? Let's look at the rest of verse 10. It says, For there is no work, there is no device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whether thou goest. In other words, here he's telling us that when an individual dies, the opportunities for work and changing one's life is gone. It is done. Remember my comments the other, di the other day was about the dash that's between the yeah. year you were born and the year you die? That dash is what we're doing right now. That's living. And that's what, what dictates where we're going to be after we die. Um, we see also that is, uh, in verses 11 and 12, he speaks about the mystery of death. Um, he references in these verses man's ability. One, the race is not always won by the speediest person. We'll, we'll, let me read the verses and then we'll go back and, and look at these. He says, I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the, bread to the wise nor yet riches to men of understanding nor ye favor to men of skill but time and chance happeneth to all. What is he saying there? He says that just like the, the, the I thought of the hare and the tortoise race. You know, the hare was fast. But he said, well, I'll just sit down here and take a nap. And the tortoise kept plodding along and won the race. Uh, it's, the battle is not always won by the strongest individual. David and Goliath are great examples. Goliath which was a much more strong especially big. He was, he was huge. You know, he was a giant. He was strong. David was but just a shepherd boy. But yet, David knew who was in control, didn't he? And he knew how to, he was obedient. And his, the one that backed him was God Almighty. 
And then the wisest person is, does not mean that he is also the wealthiest person there in verse 11, as it says there. Um, Dr. Vines mentions in our lesson about the person that was, that was voted the most, uh, uh, most likely to succeed in high school. And uh, uh, I wonder if they still do that. I, I think that, well, they did when, when, when I was in school. Uh, I, I fooled them, though. <laughs> um, I was voted most outstanding. And you talk about shock, because I was not one of the in crowd. You know, I, I wasn't one of the popular ones, but uh, uh, I also didn't go around doing a lot of things that the other kids did. And I had, at that time, I had, uh, my brother and I had our quartet. And I went, we went and sang at the local churches. And many of the, the my classmates didn't have a clue. And, uh, you know, that, I don't know if that's why they vote, but anyway, uh, that's neither here nor there. But, um, you know, people that are expected to, to succeed may not be the most successful. Um, then Solomon tells us at the end of this verse, he says, but time and chance happeneth to all. In other words, every person, everything that occurs in life, there's a time and place. We could be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Or we could be in the right place at the right time for good things to happen. We don't know those, do we? We, we don't have uh, the ability to, to know. But then Solomon confirms that death is a sure thing. And death is also a mystery because it can happen without warning. In verse 12 he says, For man also knoweth his time, as the knoweth not his time, excuse me, as the fishes that are taken in an evil net, and as a bird that is caught in a snare, so are the sons of men snared in the, in an evil time, when they fail, faileth, uh, falleth suddenly upon them. He gives these examples of this fish. The fish is out there. Have y'all ever seen them cast those big nets that's into a big circle, and and they come up with 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 fish. Those fish had no idea that was what was lurking above the surface was fixing to get them. Just like the bird he speaks here, the bird goes after a food, the worm or whatever, and somebody has placed a snare there. The bird has no clue that that's a snare, that's danger. Death can come without warning. Um, I thought it was good there where he said, um, your death date is already on the calendar. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's for sure. Um, then our last, last section, we, we've got just a couple of minutes here left, so let's see if we can get through this. Um, he, Solomon tells us a story in these last few verses of this chapter. It's like a parable, which of course is a, a simple story or, or used to illustrate a moral or spiritual lesson. Doctor, doc, uh, not doctor, Brother Rick, I think always says a, a parable is like a a uh, story with a heavenly meaning or something earthly like that. Story. Earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Yeah, there you go. That's my that's my conscious of her, y'all. And the one keeps me straight. She's your back finder. That's right. That's right. But let's read verses 13 through 16 real quick. It says, This wisdom I have also seen under the sun, and it seemed great to me. There is a little city with few men in it, and a great king came against him, besieged it, and built great snares around it. Now there was a was found in it a poor wise man, and he had by his wisdom delivered the city. Yet no one remembered that same poor man. When I said, wisdom is better than strength, nevertheless the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard. When you first read that, it seems sort of like Solomon is saying that that wisdom is better than strength and that wisdom is, is to be viewed with proper respect. And, and I, you know, I think that is correct. I, I don't have a problem with those things. But oftentimes we listen. Think about this for a minute. We listen to the loudest person in the room. The one that can talk the loudest 
gets the most attention. Uh, that quiet individual oftentimes is overlooked. Same as in this story here, talking about the poor wise man. He had wisdom that could deliver the city. Um, this, this chapter here, of course, as I've said already, it talks about Solomon's obsession with how close death is and the reality of death. You know, it's, it's, it's possible, and I think Dr. Vines uh, identifies or says something about it in her lesson that, that we, the people, are sort of like this Sid little city. And the great king who is approaching is the king of terror or death. Um, you know, one day this king of terror will besiege or surround our lives, everyone's life, and there will be he'll be knocking at our door. You know, I think I think as you get older, I think the Holy Spirit prepares us for upcoming things, and we're looking I'm not gonna say anxiously, but you do move on yeah. because you know you see the face. Of well, I tell you what. When I try to get out of bed in the morning, <laughs> well, I, 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 are, what I, mean. I know I do know what you mean. Yeah. I know I, I agree with you, Bonnie. I, I think it, it does happen that way, and um, you know we. How do we get prepared? Well, number one, we need to stay in God's word. Yeah, that's we we got to bury it in our heart. The problem is is that most people despise God's word. What does the scripture say? It talks about the way. The way is narrow, straight. Few find it, but broad is the way to destruction, the path to destruction, and that many will follow it. Um, verse 17 says, words spoken by a wise are heard more clearly than those shouted by a leader among fools. If, if, we, if we talk and, and we follow what God wants us to follow. And we're, we're, we use the wisdom that God gives us. We can make a difference. But I tell you what, if you're going to go into a shouting match against the evil ones, and this, this person here that's talking about, and I call them a loud voice here, or in the, in the scripture says here something about king of terror and all. We're talking about Satan, folks. That's who is, is, is fighting uh, these situations and fighting for control. Uh, well, his job has always been to make you doubt. That's you right. Know, I mean, Absolutely. Uh, when the rulers of fools shout, and one of the things shouted is that you don't have to worry about death, you know, uh, because you will come back in another life. They're talking about reincarnation. Okay. And that's easy. Look. This statement directly contradicts what God says. So how can it be accurate? Hebrews 9, 27 says, And it is appointed unto men once to die. But after that is the judgment. Is the judgment. There's no reincarnation. Only you know, judgment. That, that applies too. I mean, that helps you to know where these people who say they die and come back. Yes. No, they didn't die. No, they didn't. I mean, they're so mixed not, up. Not technically, right. they may have thought they. Yeah. They may have thought they did. Mm -hmm. the, the another message that the loud voice gives is one of materialism. Um, some people believe that life achievements can be linked to how much someone can gather. <laughs> Doctor Vines mentions the bumper stick, sticker that says. Um, the one who dies with the most toys wins. I've seen that bumper sticker yeah. before. But Mark 8, 36 says, For what it profiteth a man if he gain the whole world and loses his own soul? You know, over in the Gospels, Jesus, uh, a man asked Jesus what he must do to gain eternal life. And Jesus tells him, keep the commandments. And he says, oh, I've done that all my life. It's hard to see. And then he says, um, Jesus said, go give away all your possessions and follow me. Give it up. 
the scripture says that the man went away sorrowful for he owned great possessions. He had great possessions. Jesus teaches that trusting in riches can keep a person out of the kingdom of God. Remember what it says? It's, it's easier for a camel to go through the high of a, a, high of a needle than a, a rich man to enter into heaven. Wow. And then remember that Jesus praised the widow that gave the two mites. Why? It wasn't much money. It was all she had, wasn't it? She gave everything. Compared to the rich young woman. Yes, right. Compared to the, the, the root. Uh, she gave everything there. So, so another area that, that uh, this loud voice might, might tell us is that uh, you might as well live it up. Because when you die, that's it. That's all there is. Well, you and I both know if you, if you read the scripture that that's not what it says. But there's one more. There's one more that, that gets more traction than any other thing that, the, that Satan can say. It's the one that says, all roads lead, lead to God as long as we're sincere. It doesn't matter what you do as long as you're sincere. I got into it with my boss years ago about one of the lawyers that we work with in Memphis, Tennessee. He is a devout Jew, Orthodox Jew. And he told me, my boss told me, he said, I don't believe that Mike will go to hell because he's just as devoted as you being a Christian. I said, David, the word says, God's word says that if you don't believe that Jesus Christ, my son, who came and died for you and was uh, hung on a cross, died and was resurrected, if you don't believe in that, you spend eternity in hell. Amen. I said, there's no getting around that. I don't care how good Mike is. Yeah. Mike has rejected Jesus Christ as the Messiah. And I said that, that's what Satan wants us to believe, though. That it's, as long as you're a good person, as long as you do what, what you're supposed to, then, then it's all good. I've, I've already mentioned this, but Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes, comes unto me, unto the Father, but by me. Can't get any plan with Can't. You can't. It, it's just, um, you know, when we put our trust in, in Christ that quiet vo voice of wisdom that you hear is none other than the Holy Spirit or, or Jesus Christ whispering in our ear and Jesus is the one that can deliver us he is the only one that can deliver us uh, from the this king of terror or the loud voice whether you're under siege or whether you're near death, we can walk through the valley of the shadow of death and we don't have to fear. Why? Because it says in the scripture that Jesus conquered death. And we win. <laughs> yeah, we win. Jesus is the victor. We put our trust in him. We, we really need burdened hearts reach out to lots of people. We do. And not give up. We do. I, I do. Uh, sometimes we write up. people off too quick, don't we? Just don't give up. Especially with your family. We've got, uh, got real quick, i got a minute. This week, did not know it was going to happen, but found out that my niece was here from Remington, or she lives in Port Orchard. Washington State. Her husband is uh, in the Navy. He's on a submarine. He's getting ready to deploy again right now. They've got three boys, 11, 8, and 3. And Kristen came down for a funeral on her daddy's side of the family. And uh, we didn't know they were here until they, they told us. My sister came down from East Tennessee. Well, Kristen has been trying to get her husband to go to church. Well, she's finally taken her boys back to church. Y'all pray for Kristen Sterling and David. He calls himself a atheist. 
Yeah, he does. He is a smart guy. Smart. He's he's the, in the Navy. He's done extremely well. He's in he's been in submarines ever since he's been in there, and he, they are trying to push him up the ladder and everything as a non commissioned officer and everything. And he's 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 gone. He's been in sixteen years. He's, he's plans to get out in another four, but. Um, but the boys didn't even know who Jesus was. Didn't know who Jesus was. And she finally started taking him back to church and everything. You know, the word atheist is not in the Bible. It no. says it's fool that said in his heart. There is right. no God. Well, listen, let's let's pray. I've got some things I'm going to pass out here that Brother Noel gave us and uh, everything, some scriptures and all. So let me, let me uh, dismiss this and I'll pass these out. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. We just ask that you would go with us as we go out, spread your gospel. And Lord, help us live that abundant life that's only possible through you. We love you, Lord. In thy name we pray. Amen. Turn this.